thank you. I, I thank organizers uh, for inviting me uh, here and giving me the opportunity to give a talk about my research. And I'm uh, yeah. Um, today I'm going to uh, talk about a uh, giant component uh, of uh, random graph, GNP, Gross National Product, GNP. And so uh, I will try to completely describe a uh, giant component of GNP. So uh, complete description, in, in, in my definition, complete description means uh, what? Uh, something like nobody else can describe more precise. <laughs> so, uh, so complete description is, is, is quite quite uh, I mean ambiguous because because uh, in, in many cases it's not well defined. But my definition is complete man, means nobody nobody else can uh, describe more precise, and it's more than that. So I, I said I, I, I'm gonna try, but so you can try, you can, you can make more complete <laughs> description. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, to describe the giant component of of of. Uh, of random graph GMP, I will briefly uh, go over uh, these things. Maybe, maybe not briefly. <coughs> just I, 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 sh I need to uh, explain all of these uh, describers. First of all, I will briefly define uh, random graph, random graph GMP, and uh, talk about uh, emergence of giant component. This is quite famous uh, result, and many of you may, may already know, but uh, for people who, who don't know, uh, I will describe this. Uh, after that, uh, I will uh, talk about, uh, really briefly, a uh, branching process. Uh, this is a uh, standard uh, person, uh, Carl Carlton Watson uh, type branching process, and then, uh, I will talk about random regular graphs, and then the, the two core of overlap. And so I will, uh, uh, to the two core of graph definition is simple, so, uh, but this is quite useful to describe a uh, giant component of random graph. So uh, finally, I will uh, describe the giant component of random graph <coughs> using two core and branching process. And random graph. Okay, uh, random graph. Random graph GMP is so, so consider consider uh, the complete graph on n vertices. There are uh, these many edges, n choose two edges, and, but, and each of these edges is in uh, in our random graph GMP with probability p and uh, all edge probability probability is independent of all others. Okay. Is it clear? So for, for example, I, this is quite quite uh, easy example. If p is equal to 1, then we choose uh, average. If p is equal to 0, then we don't choose anything. So uh, uh, in, in the case of p is equal to 1, it, it becomes, this <coughs> becomes a complete graph. Uh, in the case so B equal zero. Uh, in, in the case that uh, P equal zero, uh, it, this one becomes empty. So uh, expected number of edges uh, because there are these many trial and each of them belongs to our random lab control P. Uh, expectation is this, and uh, this is this is complete description of random graph, but. Uh, it, it doesn't give many uh, much sense though. But uh, for fixed graph G with M edges, so the probability our random graph becomes uh, this fixed graph is P to the M times 1 minus P to the N to 2 minus M. Okay. 
it doesn't. Uh, it, this this is complete description, but it doesn't give much information. Unfortunately, so here is an example. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven vertices, and so uh, probability our random graph now. So in this case, n equals seven. So probability g m p equal to g is uh, our random graph becomes uh, this particular graph labeled one. Becomes because there are one, two, three, four, five uh, edges, uh, so p to the five, and there are these many non edges, so this 21 is of course 7 choose 2. 7 choose 2, I, I hope I'm right. 7 choose 2 is 21. <coughs> so uh, there are uh, these many non edges, so probability of this one is p to the five times 1 minus p to the 16. Okay. So, connected component, uh, so probably uh, all of you know this, but uh, just, just in case. So, I'm not going to define uh, connected component, but uh, by picture, uh, we, have, we have three connected components in this case. So, these two are not connected, so but this is one connected component, or the another. <coughs> Oops. Okay. So emergence of giant component. So in early 60s, uh, Adolf uh, studied this random graph. Actually, they introduced uh, uh, this uh, random graph. So in, in random graph GMP, we uh, we have new parameter. We just uh, uh, define uh, p times n equal to lambda. So lambda becomes a parameter. So this is just uh, you, you may think normalized vector. So it's almost uh, expected uh, average degree. So actually, uh, expected average degree should be this one because. For so each vertex here, B, there are n minus one other vertices, so that each of them belong to G GM. Each of them belongs to uh, GMP with probability, so expected uh, degree is P times N minus one, but uh, this one minus one is not. The crucial, so uh, we just define uh, p times n equal to that. <coughs> so uh, they prove that uh, uh, there is a giant component if and only if it, uh, lambda is bigger than one. So now question is what is uh, the giant component? So giant component, my definition of giant component is just one huge component. <laughs> and, and so uh, precise definition is there are many components. Uh, there may be uh, many components in, in this land of graph. But uh, the there is biggest one, the biggest one, the second uh, largest one, second largest one. Maybe the, the, the largest one, size of largest one may be equal to the size of uh, second largest one. But we just uh, use a, a kind of type break, whatever you want. So we just. Uh, uh, order all components uh, uh, in terms of, or in terms of uh, the each size. Si here, size means uh, number of number of vertices. So the biggest one uh, in the in 
in the sense of its size, uh, is in left and right in your side. So it's the order thing. And uh, then uh, the, the largest one is much bigger than the second largest one. Then uh, we would say there is a giant compound. So much larger than means uh, in, in limit uh, sense, the ratio between these two, the, the, the largest one and second largest one, the size ratio uh, goes to infinite or uh, zero, depends on which one is in denominator. Okay, so, so you, you know what I mean. So, so the, that's an exact definition of giant. So, uh, so we say there is a giant, giant component in the sense of limit. So as n goes to infinite, so there is a giant component or an assumption like that. Because otherwise the ratio cannot be infinite or zero. Okay. So this is what, what Ed Shirani said. Uh, there is a giant component if and only if lambda is so uh, expecting the every degree is larger than one, then there is giant component. Otherwise, there is no giant component. So what does this mean? Uh, so uh, exact description of the, what I said before is this. So let's say W or, or W and P. Is, so in in some cases, I I will write just W instead of W of M P. So. Let's say W of M P is uh, is uh, 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 W of M P is the size of all largest component of G M P. Then uh, uh, this size uh, is smaller than uh, log log order, the so constant times log log n. If lambda is less than one, if lambda is bigger than one, uh, W is Linear. In other words, the, the, the giant component, uh, the, the largest component, uh, becomes very uh, uh, <coughs> linear. And moreover, uh, I didn't write that, uh, write that but uh, the, in this case, the second largest component is of this size. So uh, the ratio is huge. Uh, the, the larger, in this case, uh, the largest one is uh, linear size and second largest is just low in size and uh, the difference is huge. Here, uh, uh, we can even uh, find uh, uh, this constant, theta lambda, uh, precisely. So theta lambda is the uh, solution of this equation. So, uh, you may realize, maybe, maybe not, but uh, you can just uh, check that this uh, has positive solution theta uh, only if lambda is uh, right. Otherwise, there is no solution. And which are, uh, I'm, I'm spending too much time on. So in uh, in ninety, uh, Uchak improved this one. So the the giant component emerges when lambda minus one is much bigger than n to the minus one third, and improving uh, all your result of Brush. So what does this mean? So here is uh, a lambda. Is equal to one. Then, if lambda is 1.9, then uh, there is no giant component. All uh, components are very small. And 1.1, then uh, there is giant component. And in this sense, uh, if we consider a small window n to the minus one third here, then. Here already uh, we can see a giant component. So again, the definition of giant component is uh, the largest one is much larger than uh, uh, all others. Okay. 
Okay, so this is a uh, rough statement of Wuchak's result. So, uh, size of the largest component is about 2 epsilon n, when epsilon, epsilon is very small, but uh, much bigger than this number. And the size of second largest one is much smaller than, is something like this, which we can, so it looks difficult to show this one. It's not difficult, but not trivial either. So uh, the second largest one is much smaller than uh, the, uh, the largest one. So that we can prove. I mean, he can prove it. OK? So uh, this is precise statement of Wuchak's result. So uh, if lambda, we said lambda is equal to 1 plus epsilon, and epsilon is bigger than this, much bigger than n to the minus 1 third, then uh, we prove some probability. This is not a uh, uh, truth, so you don't have to remember it. But uh, all you have to remember is the, this goes to 0. And the size of giant component is about this one. And uh, uh, the variation is much smaller than this one. So uh, a natural question is, uh, for this result, uh, earlier result I, I, I mentioned, so natural question for this result is why one? So I used to uh, say that uh, uh, in mathematics, uh, all answers are zero or one. So either it, it may be clear it's not zero, so answer should be one. <laughs> but this one is, yeah, I'm not going to explain uh, uh, much here, but uh, uh, this is related to Poisson lambda uh, branching process. Uh, the same lambda here, same lambda here. Same parameter. Uh, so uh, starting from uh, one vertex or one, one person, and so it, it A produce Poisson lambda uh, children. And uh, its children, uh, its child, uh, produce Poisson lambda uh, child. This could, could have been zero, but then there's not, uh, nothing further happens. So otherwise, it, it keep going. So this is a uh, uh, Galton-Watson type range process, and a very yeah, typical one. So for this, this branch process, say, lambda is less than one, one person produced, I mean, give, give a birth, uh, less than one person in expectation that then uh, it may die, die out. Uh, that's clear. If, if lambda is bigger than one, then it may survive. So survival prob probability when lambda is, uh, lambda is bigger than 1 is the same zeta lambda. Remember, uh, the zeta lambda is solution of this equation. So this is related to this one. There is some interpretation, but I don't have time to explain. I, I have sound effect, but sound effect. Yeah. So, uh, you, I hope you remember. This result of a chart, so. Which are proved with some probability close to one, uh, the size of giant component is theta lambda n, uh, and the, the deviation term is n most this one. Uh, we can even improve this, this result using Poisson cloning model. So, uh, let's consider a supercritical region uh, first. And so 
again p times n is uh, lambda, but I will uh, I reparameterize p times n uh, using one plus epsilon. So this one plus epsilon is lambda. So uh, lambda is slightly bigger than one. With uh, epsilon is much bigger than n to the minus one third, and alpha is some parameter. Then we we will get this result, which means. <coughs> which means uh, the size of, size of largest component uh, it, it has more or less, more or less has uh, a normal distribution with mean this one and variance this one. So uh, the, this size uh, <coughs> not exactly because of this omega, but uh, so you may consider this omega is some constant here. Of course, positive constant. So uh, the size of giant component uh, is almost normal distribution uh, with mean this one and variance this one. Okay. So uh, of course, this, this, this number is smaller than this one. So, value, so this is right hand side actually. So, this one is smaller than this, and of course the, the mean is almost the same. I like Or mean is exactly the same. And in sub subcritical region, and so let's say lambda is one minus epsilon, uh, and epsilon is much bigger than n to the minus one zero. So, so notice that this is minus in, in this case. Then uh, we can. Uh, precisely describe the size of giant component in terms of its probability. Probability in the size is bigger than this one. And here's grass C is uh, quite small and exponentially small in C. And less than this one, here is minus one, mi minus sign here. Then uh, it's also exponentially small in C. So uh, size, uh, the, the, the size of largest component is more than uh, this one, and up plus minus some some con some constant, which is bounded constant. So that's what we can prove. Yeah, please, so please feel free to inter interrupt me to ask question. Yeah. So in your subcritical case, also. The distribution is close to the normal distribution? No, no, that's not, that's not. Actually, they, they, this uh, says that uh, it's not. Uh, so it, uh, the variance, uh, variance term is this one. So uh, again, this is best possible. So, so uh, variance term is this one, and it, it's not close to normal distribution. So in, in, in the case of normal distribution, this one should be squared. So in the previous one, this one is squared. Any other questions? Okay. So now I don't change the subject slightly. I will come back to this one. Uh, maybe not, but uh, so I will I'll come back to uh, the issue of giant component, structure of giant. giant. Uh, so I will uh, describe the structure of giant component uh, in, in, in the last few minutes, but I'm not going to talk about size, size is uh, So random D regular like So there are there are many uh, models uh, for random uh, regular like So uh, I'm gonna uh, introduce uh, just uniform model and uh, pairing model. So they are uh, they are almost the same. I mean eventually the same. Definitions are quite different, but eventually. Or not exactly the same, but essentially the same. Okay. 
So uniform model uh, is quite uh, simple. So uh, again, we have n vertices, and so uh, every degree becomes d. d so and so uh, considering, I mean, a uniform model definition of a uniform model is quite simple. So each d regular graph on n vertices uh, is equally likely to be chosen, to be this one. In, a, in other words, we, we, so for fixed set of, of, of n vertices, we collect all d regular graph on, on, on this fixed set of vertices and choose one uniform graph. Okay. So that's uniform graph. So uh, random one regular graph, which should be a random perfect matching. And then the two regular graph is union of this joint cycle. So there are some, some results. Uh, not easy, but not extremely difficult. Either. So how about a random three regular graph? So uh, random one regular and random two regular graphs are quite easy to understand, but random three regular graph is quite difficult so, uh, to understand, I mean. So uh, uh, people consider pairing models. So I will, I will describe pairing model. You can this, okay. So for pairing model, so consider uh, two, two To define pairing model of random uh, three regular graph, we consider this one. Okay. So uh, consider uh, so now we are considering three three regular graph, not general D. So now D is equal to three. Okay. So uh, uh, we consider three copies of V one and three copies of V two, V three, and this one. Then uh, random three regular may be three regular graph may be defined as follows. Uh, we choose two two what is this? This is green. So I would like call, call uh, these these are uh, clones. Cl these are clones of V one and clones of V two. Something like that. So. We choose uh, random two clones, uniformly at random. So we choose, we take two clones uniformly at random, and then we connect them. Then uh, our graph become, uh, co contains uh, the, this edge. And random two, keep choosing random two or something like that. And we just, sometimes it, it could have loop, sometimes it could have uh, uh, could have multiple edges. But not always. That's what uh, people proved. So uh, we after that uh, we condition on uh, this 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 event. There is no loop and there's no multiple edge. Then uh, it's quite easy to prove that on, under this condition, uh, our pairing model is exactly the same as the uniform model. So that proof is not difficult. Okay, so, uh, yes. And people consider, uh, so, we, we call uh, these event low loop uh, and no multiple edge. We, we call this event uh, simple. Then uh, people uh, computed estimated probability of simple. So uh, when t is equal to 3, this is constant. Or, or if t is constant, uh, constant, 5, 10, then this is constant. And, and so, this D and we can we, we have the same thing for uh, even larger uh, D we can we can estimate probabilities. <coughs> Question. 
So that that's about it. Uh, that's it for uh, random uh, regular graph. And uh, before I describe uh, uh, giant component component of GMP, uh, this is mm. the the last piece I need. So k core of graph a k core of graph. So definition of k core a is, is uh, quite simple as usual. So uh, we have graph, and then uh, uh, we consider all subgraph of that graph, the uh, given graph, uh, subgraph. So, and so we take uh, subgraph with for which the minimum degree is uh, at least oops, at least k, and so we just uh, take the largest. Or another way to to find k core of a graph is we keep removing vertices of degree less than k. Then what's remaining is uh, k. It could have been empty, but usually, a empty, by definition, empty graph can be uh, k core if, if uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, subgraph of degree n is k, minimum degree n is k. But, uh, but that's the definition, but if there is something, then we, we have k For example, uh, if k is equal to k is equal to and uh, uh, if there is a cycle in the graph, then k core exists. I mean, k uh, k core is non-empty because k core most contains this this cycle. And So the, here is simple fact. After removing all edges in two core of a graph, the graph becomes forest. Is it clear? So if there is cycle, then it it must belong to to the two core of a graph. So if we, we remove all all the edges of of, of the graph and uh, of of, of the, uh, the two core, then the remaining graph should be forest. If, if there is a, a cycle, then it must 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 have uh, you know two. That's it. Okay. So here is uh, theorem. Okay. So uh, this is the simplest version. So we can we can do this for for larger epsilon, but. Uh, uh, to make the statement simpler, I, I assume this. Okay, so uh, again, so p times n is 1 plus epsilon. Epsilon is small, but not extremely small, meaning n to the minus, uh, much larger than n to the minus 1 third. And so uh, uh, for to make the statement simple again, uh, I, I made this assumption, but uh, we, we actually don't need this one. But statement may be a, a very wrong, not extremely wrong, um, longer than this one at least. So I assumed this one for a sim simpler statement. Then, uh, with the high probability, the two core of the giant component of GMP may be described as F4. So we consider uh, X a uh, Gaussian random variable, uh, meaning it has a uh, normal distribution with mean this one and variance this one. And uh, K if you are a random three regular graph on uh, two times this number, I mean integer part of this number, it could <coughs> a Gaussian random variable is real random variable, so it may not be any, 
integer, but uh, we consider integer part of this one. Technically, x can be negative, but if negative, we, if that probability is extremely small, so uh, because we are our statement is with high probability, we assume that x is non negative. So again, the, uh, uh, the x has uh, uh, x is Gaussian and the variable with mean this one and variance this one, and k k is for kernel. K be a, uh, this is standard notation for the kernel. K be a, a random serial regular graph on twice uh, integer part of x. So. Uh, we just first generate the x first. So, can you see? And so, uh, in this case, x is, uh, let's say this is twice x rather than x. One, two, three, four, five, six. In this case, uh, x is 4.2 or whatever, something like that. Then uh, we consider uh, uh, 8 vertices. And on 8 vertices, we consider uh, 3 regular graphs. I don't know how to draw 3 regular graphs. Uh, on 8 vertices. So I should be careful. Uh, something like this. So suppose I have some zero. So you don't have. So uh, you may forget this this one and this one. Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not easy to uh, construction. Forget about this, this two and <laughs> this one uh, and it's still regular section. So we generate three regular graph on an A with eight vertices. Okay, so here I can exactly this. Then uh, the true core uh, can be constructed uh, uh, like this. So we first generate three regular graph on on twice twice x. twice x vertices, uh, and then we extend this this one. So we just put uh, degree two two vertices here. And so, how many how many uh, for each edge? We just put uh, uh, we make each edge uh, a path. <coughs> So what is the uh, length of path? Mm -hmm. So something like this. So each each of the these paths. Uh, uh, lengths, uh, their lengths are uh, uh, IID geometric random variables with the mean one half. So, just, it's something like IID. So, this is in an uh, asymptotic sense. Uh, as n goes to infinite, the distribution becomes like this. So, that that's two core. Two core uh, 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 giant complex. So remember, uh, this is two core, the two core of giant component. The two core of uh, original graph G P is slightly more. This one plus some uh, disjoint size. So uh, two core, two core of G M P would be this. So something like this. 
the, the, this length we can describe more precisely. Something, something like this, slightly different. And that's a structure of true core. Uh, true, the true core of giant component of GMP becomes this. With high probability, of course. Then, then we are almost done. So more of the, uh, then uh, after we, we know the uh, true core of giant component, we, we may describe a uh, 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 complete giant component. So uh, the giant component of GMP may be uh, described by attaching independent Poisson 1 minus epsilon branch process to each vertex of the true core. In other words, I can push here. So for each vertex, we just uh, uh, consider for each we for each vertex we consider independent Poisson branching process. Branching ratio is one minus epsilon. So uh, to be precise, there is something like this. So if we you know uh, do. For Poisson random, uh, Poisson branching process, if you know dual of some, something like this, then uh, to be precise, uh, precise uh, lambda is 1 plus epsilon, then mu, uh, there is unique solution mu, for fixed lambda there is unique solution mu less than 1, uh, this is true. So, uh, to be precise, this is Poisson mu branching process. But if if not, uh, epsilon is very small, then it becomes uh, mu becomes something like this. Uh, the, uh, this is the, uh, this is uh, what I meant the complete description of, of uh, the giant component in when P is this, <coughs> when epsilon is this length. So we consider uh, three regular web and so we each edge uh, of uh, three regular web, random three regular web uh, becomes a path so of length of uh, this. Then uh, uh, for each vertex we attach a, a Poisson 1 minus in epsilon branching process. So you, I hope you remember this branching process. Yeah, this, exactly this branching process for each vertex. So the proof, proof is uh, for, for for the first part, uh, we used the uh, Poisson cloning model, uh, which uh, not all of you know, know it, but some some uh, it's a model uh, which makes uh, analysis of true uh, much easier. So we just describe we may be able to describe the two core of the giant component like this, and so we can find the exact numbers uh, like this. And then uh, uh, for, for the proof of this one, we need to uh, use uh, a simple but interesting computation argument. We don't have to even compute. We just write down formula of, of the result and formula of, of uh, I mean, what should I do? So we don't have to write, uh, we don't have to uh, compute anything, but we just write for, uh, for formal formula for two things. One thing is uh, this one. Uh, just we attach independent Poisson branching process uh, on each vertex of Drupal. And uh, we just compute probability of, of, of probability that GMP becomes this one. Then the two formula becomes uh, look, the two formula 
uh, in, uh, exactly the same eventually. So the, I, I know this is bad, but uh, uh, to prove A is equal to B, we just write down uh, distribution of A and distribution of B in just formula, uh, even though you don't understand. But if the, those two things are the same, then they are equal in, in the sense of probability. It's something like that. So we just, uh, uh, so we don't have to compute uh, exactly, but just compare uh, these two. Okay, so initially I tried to uh, probe this one, uh, assuming this one, but uh, I, I realized that it's too complicated to write. So uh, I decide, decided to stop here. Thank you. Uh, questions? <laughs>